Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Last week, I talked about Chang Nai Zhou's proverb, "Ro guo qi, gang luo dian." In his book, Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu or Chang Family Martial Training Manual, and、uh, explained the usage of the latter half, "gang luo dian," in Tai Chi. This week, our main topic will be the former half, "Ro guo qi." And、uh, its usage in Xingyi, but first let's get high on tea. This week's tea is、uh, Gao Shan Yun Wu Cha. First off, what is Gao Shan Yun Wu Cha? Is this a specific tea? Not at all. Actually, Gao Shan Yun Wu Cha is the category of tea that grows in a specific environment. Gao Shan means high mountain. Yun Wu means cloud and mist, and the Cha means tea. So Gao Shan Yun Wu Cha is a tea grown in a cloudy and misty environment. Thus, high mountains are more suited for this category of tea. Take a look at this photo. There is a very famous proverb in China. Quote, 高山云雾出好茶 End quote. Translation: High mountain cloud and mist produces great tea. End translation. In other words, great tea is very often from a cloudy and a misty mountain. As a result, any tea grown in such an environment is usually called. 高山云雾茶 or high mountain cloud mist tea. Traditionally, 高山云雾茶 is a subcategory of green tea since green tea drinkers appreciate the freshness and the special flavor of this tea grown in this specific environment. As a result, this type of tea is popular. And typically, also a bit more expensive. So, why is Gao Shan Yun Mu Cha considered high quality tea? Let me explain. Many of you may already know that natural environmental factors, especially temperature, sunlight, and soil conditions, have a major impact on the tea flavor. For example. Stronger sunlight and high temperature will increase the tea polyphenol concentration in the tea leaves, resulting in a stronger bitter taste. <clears throat> However, if the growing area experiences more cloudy and misty conditions, it leads to decrease in total polyphenol content. But at the same time. Tea amino acids such as L-theanine will accumulate more, making the tea more delicious. This is why high mountain cloud and mist tea is a lot more delicious than the same tea grown in the areas with more intense sunlight and high temperatures. That is why the same tea grown at different heights on the same mountain can have different levels of deliciousness. Those who appreciate the delicious freshness of green tea will surely enjoy Gao Shan Yun Mu Cha. It is also worth noting that the name of Gao Shan Yun Mu Cha mentions two factors. First, Gao Shan or high mountain. And two, Yun Wu or cloud and mist, both of which influence tea in different ways. Research shows that the second factor, the cloud and the mist, has a lot more influence on the tea flavor. So, a tea can be considered Gao Shan Yun Wu Cha as long as it experiences a lot of cloud and mist. Even if it is not a high enough mountain, this also explains the difference in tea flavors using leaves from the same tree but in a different seasons, giving the difference in temperature and sunlight 
levels between different seasons. A cloudy and misty atmosphere will not just block a lot of the sunlight, but will also block some of the wavelengths or colors of light responsible for triggering chemical changes in the tea. Furthermore, the air temperature on mountains can have a wider range throughout a single day, which can also lead to differences in the chemical composition of the tea leaves. As mentioned earlier, Gao Shan Yunmu Cha is not one specific tea, but a category of a tea defined by its natural growing environment. So, this tea is not restricted to one particular area in China. In fact, many famous mountains such as Anhui, Zhejiang, Jiangxi, Sichuan, Hubei, Guangxi, among others, are the major areas for producing Gaoshan Yunmu Cha. Let's take a look at some beautiful pictures of the natural environment of this tea. <coughs> Since Gaoshan Yunmu Cha is normally grown naturally, it is generally pesticide free and a great choice for anyone concerned about pesticides in tea. The richness of a natural fertilized soil without any chemical additives make this tea organic in most cases. Compared to other green teas, Gaoshan Yunmu Cha isn't better in terms of health benefits. People drink this tea more for its great flavor. I have a Gaoshan Yunmu Cha produced in Wuyi Mountain. Usually, this kind of tea from Wuyi Mountain has a bigger tea leaf and a stronger flavor compared to the same tea in other mountains. A very unique tea indeed. This is the tea leaf, much bigger in size, producing a much stronger flavor. I hope you will enjoy Gaoshan Yunmu Cha. Do let me know your experience with it in the comment section. With that, let's get on with today's main topic, Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi. Topics covered in today's video include First, reviewing of Chang Nai Zhou and Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian. Second, practice of Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi. Third, principle of Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi. Fourth, misperception of Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi. Fifth, demonstration. Sixth, correction of a student's practice. Seventh, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Review of Chang Nai Zhou and Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian. In last week's video titled Internal Style Concept 58 Gang Luo Dian in Tai Chi. I talked about Chang Nai Zhou, his work, and one of his proverbs. I highly recommend you watch that video, link is in the description. Even though last week's video mainly focused on the application of his concept in Tai Chi, the explanation of his background and his contributions are also relevant to today's video. Regardless, let me summarize some of the important relevant points from the previous video. They are First, Chang Nai Zhou, a martial art scholar who lived from 1724 to 1783, was the author of a phenomenal but not so well known martial art training document, Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu, or Chang Family Martial Training Manual. A book covering both theory and practice useful to both internal and external martial artists. Second, it won't be an exaggeration to say that almost 
every sentence in his book can be considered a martial proverb. Once you understand the value of his work, Rou Guoqi Gang Luo Dian is not just one gem out of many. This proverb says that when transferring energy, it should be flexible and relaxed, while the structure and the power should be solid and strong when reaching the striking point. Third, Chang Nai Zhou also pointed out that our energy originates in the Ming Men, an area of the lower back. The energy then extends to the limbs, also called the injection of energy. In the context of energy circulation, there should be neither blockage nor restriction in order to move effectively, thus making the movement faster and harder to predict. That's how Chang Nai Zhou explained the relationship between solid power and smooth energy transfer. Fourth, Chang Nai Zhou also explained when to use Gang or solid and strong method and when to use the Rou or flexible and relaxed method. According to him, the place where energy strikes or drops is the place to apply the Gang method while the state between Yin and Yang is for blood and energy circulation and also the right moment to apply the Rou method. Again, please check out last week's video for further details on these summarized points. Now, let's look at how to apply this proverb in Xing Yi in the next topic. Topic 2 Practice of Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi. Any Chinese style of martial arts, no matter internal or external, always focus on the concept of Gang Rou Xiang Ji or integration of Gang and Rou. For a better understanding of Gang and Rou, check out my video titled Internal Style Concept No. 6 Gang and Rou. Link is in the description. Long story short, Gang and Rou are a pair of opposite but closely related terms that have to be handled correctly, or else the practice would be either stiff or sloppy. However, at the same time, different styles may tend to be more Gang or more Rou. For example, Tai Chi practice is more Rou while Xing Yi practice is more Gang even though both of them aim at the same ultimate objectives. The similarity of the final result of the styles cannot be used as an excuse to deny the differentiation of a different practice paths. Needless to say, Xing Yi and Tai Chi adopt different practice paths. Recall the meanings of Rou Guo Qi and Gang Luo Dian. Now, if we say that it is not easy for a Tai Chi practitioner to master Gang Luo Dian, then likewise, Xing Yi practitioners may also find it challenging to master Rou Guo Qi. Let me explain. Xing Yi is characterized by a powerful Fa Jin or power releasing practice in both form and self defense situations. You may also have noticed many practitioners lack powerful Fa Jin ability in their Xing Yi practice. On the surface, it may seem as if the problem is caused by a lack of power generation and energy concentration. But speaking from observation and teaching experience, many practitioners lack powerful Fa Jin because of the incorrect handling of Rou Guo Qi. In other words, the inability to transfer energy in a flexible and relaxed manner. So, 
the inability to handle rho guo qi is the root cause behind the lack of powerful fa jin. So, paying attention to correctly timing rho and gang is key to having not only gang luo dian but also rho guo qi. <coughs> to practice rho guo qi in xing ni, begin with slow movements in a relaxed manner. Then gradually make the movements faster while still ensuring your body structure and the muscles are in a relaxed state. It is worth noting that a relaxed state does not mean that the body and the muscles become very soft, but instead they should be in a state of readiness to move faster and powerful. This readiness, both physical and mental, is critical to mastering a powerful Fa Jin. If you see that someone's movement looks relaxed but lacks a powerful Fa Jin, then the so-called relaxed movement is, in reality, just a soft movement, which is not real relaxation. To an experienced practitioner, real relaxation ensures a state of readiness, not sloppiness. It is important to be able to not only practice the Xing Yi movement at different levels of muscle tension, but also to maintain the same level of skill at different speeds. As mentioned countless times before, martial art practice involves training at different levels and combinations of speed and strength. The integration of speed and strength is the foundation of martial power and is the result of coordination between different body parts, mind, and other key factors. This requires the practitioner to pay attention to both speed and strength in martial training. More specifically, when you practice Xing Yi, you should make forward movements slower and make inward movements faster. Traditionally, the proverb Qing Chu Zhong Shou or moving forward lightly while moving inward strongly describes an opposite approach in training at a certain point. When you practice the moving outward lightly part, focus on the detailed movement of the changing of the hand shape, power direction, and the internal changes resulting from this kind of exercise. This is a great way to experience Chang Nai Zhou's proverb, Rou Guo Qi, which means martial energy should be flexible and relaxed during transfer. Bear in mind, the emphasis on Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi does not discount the importance of Gang Luo Dian. Gang Luo Dian is the natural and rather obvious aspect of Xing Yi practice, while Rou Guo Qi is rather subtle and requires more effort to master. To summarize, Xing Yi is famous for Fa Jin or power release practice. So, to practice Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi, you should slow down the movement while transferring energy or when your physical body changes its state from static to slow motion. So, what are some important principles of Rou Guo Qi in the traditional Xing Yi practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. Principles of uh, Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi As mentioned earlier, I'd like to point out that all the information introduced in last week's video can be applied in today's video, even though the previous one was based on the application of Tai Chi, not the theory itself. In last week's video, I specifically emphasized that in any martial art practice, there is no 
pure 钢 ，no pure 柔 ，meaning that any offer emphasized on 钢 or 柔 is wrong. So integration and coordination of 钢 and 柔 is the key to a great martial art practice, which reflects the concept of 阴 and 阳 So this is why Chang Nai Zhou wrote in his fourth volume of his book. Quote: 停顿处，意卓有力；转观处，意活泼随机。起势时，气要松活，气要情而不硬。落点方，意其卓进，使尽平生力气，使得刚柔相济之妙。End quote. Translation: When there is the pulsing. There should be power. When movement reaches Zhuang Guan O turning gate, a term used to simply express the subtle turning motion, it should be dynamic and natural. When initiating a movement, energy should be relaxed and dynamic. Energy should be held without stiffness. Then apply all the energy. When reaching the striking or dropping point, it is the starting point of mastering the subtlety of integration of Gang and Rou practice. End translation. This writing expresses that energy should be dynamic and flexible before reaching the striking point. Therefore, reaching the level of Gang Rou Xiangji. Of the integration of Gang and Rou involves mastering the practice of timing in handling Gang and Rou in both formal practice and self-defense situations. Now let's debunk a misperception of Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian in Xing Yi practice in the next topic. Topic four: Misperception of Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian. I'm disappointed by the fact that Chang Nai Zhou's book is not well known, but I'm also optimistic that it will get its due recognition with time. I will consider myself fortunate if my content can help even a little towards it. Anyway, since his book is not well known, there is no direct obvious misperception about his writing. However. Given the wide range of influence of his writing on many Chinese martial arts, including Xing Yi, there are many relevant concepts introduced in his book, which are in fact misperceived by some Xing Yi practitioners. I'd like to point out one of them in today's video. Some Xing Yi practitioners believe that since Xing Yi is a hard art, as opposite to a soft art. In terms of its power generation and the required physical strength, you should always maintain strength in practice. Let's debunk this. Yes, Xing Yi is a hard style in terms of power generation. However, being powerful does not mean hard. Hard can mean rigid in English, but in Chinese we call it Gang. Which can be translated to powerful and strong. In the old days, people used the expression to differentiate the word hard and strong by saying that being hard is like iron, while being strong is like steel. I think the imagery of contrast between iron and steel in terms of their rigidity. Is very obvious. <clears throat> to generate a powerful force, the underlying characteristics of Xing Yi power is Gang, or being powerful and strong. However, the movements, including both the structure and the nature of the force, are not Gang, or else the movements may not only be slow but also stiff. So you should maintain. A relaxed manner when initiating a movement, but still keep it fast, flexible, and dynamic. 
when it is time to execute fudging or power release, tense everything at once such that the energy gets concentrated at the striking point. Therefore, concentrating on the power way too early before reaching the striking point is a big mistake. Bear in mind, timing matters. Topic 5. Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate the snake movement from Zhang Zhaodong's branch of Xing Yi. Pay attention to the flexible and the relaxed manner in the course of performing the circular movement. Ok, Zhang Zhaodong's snake movement. Topic 6. Correction of a student's practice Today's student's demonstration will be performed by Andrea Morris, a student of mine and also a martial art teacher based in Italy. He is very skillful both as a practitioner and as a teacher. If you are interested in studying Xing Yi, Bagua, and other styles in Italy, I recommend contacting him directly. His email address is in the description. Hello, let my students demonstrate part of the Xue Dian's hawk movement, and then I correct his uh, practice. By the way, he's come from Italy and is teaching in Italy. So let's start from this posture. Yes, then continue. Hmm, continue. One, two, continue. Three, then four. Yes, thank you. So. Let me correct his movement. You can fade to here now. So let's start from here. Since this, since this one is a grabbing, if I'm holding my arm, right? Then you move to here. Oh, this side. Then you you push to here. So the finger should point slightly downward, extend this area. Second, elbows should extend, like this kind of structure. Then before we move forward, uh, uh, extend forward. Then here, right. But at this posture, shoulder extend more, and uh, focus at this area. The back fist, since they hold the arm, so here, sink downward, and the knee push it forward. Then next foot part, yes. So have this kind of momentum. Practice this. Then nice movement. Nice movement. Here is the, to protect yourself. So yes, like this. Yes, instead of here. Second, lower a little bit. So one, then nice before you you shift the weight. Then two, yes. But the two body sink down. Right. Then next part, three. So today's part, important thing is like body move to left. So three. Second is here outward more because I punch you, you block. Yes. So three. Right, then could you please move back and then repeat this section again? Let's start from uh, here. Then one, two, then three, then four, then five, then one. Very good, thank you. Very nice. Topic 7 Takeaways. First, Chang Nai Zhou, a martial arts scholar who lived from 1724 to 1783, was the author of a phenomenal but not so well known martial arts training document, Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu, or Chang Family Martial Training Manual, a book covering both theories and practices, useful to both internal and external martial artists. Second, Xing Yi is uh, famous for Fa Jin or power release practice. So, to practice Rou Guo Qi in Xing Yi, you should slow down the mo movement while transferring energy, or when your physical body changes its state from statics to slow motion. Third, being able to practice Xing Yi by paying special attention to timing in terms of managing Gang and Rou is the Key factor. Fourth, some Xing Yi practitioners believe that since Xing Yi is a hard art, 
as opposite to a soft art in terms of its power generation and the required physical strength. You should always maintain strength in practice. This is a misperception. You should maintain a relaxed manner when initiating a movement, but still keep it fast, flexible, and dynamic. Make sure to check out the demonstration and student correction sections for more visual idea of Rou Guo Qi practice in Xing Yi. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.